so in this session i'll be discussing about regulation of gene expression in eukaryotes we all know that eukaryotic organisms have a very well defined nucleus and the the gene expression that is the transformation of information from gene to protein takes place in a very well planned manner in order to produce a particular protein and that too in a desired quantity so to go enter into more details about it uh, unlike prokaryotes in eukaryotes expression of gene into proteins can be controlled at various locations synthesis of proteins is controlled right from the chromatin stage and expression of gene is controlled at many steps during the process of transcription and translation that is ultimately uh, during the synthesis of proteins from the gene it undergoes through various stages that is transcription translation etc and at all these points the expression is controlled or regulated now moving to the next uh, slide uh, regulation in the chromatin stage as i said before the chromatin stage is the very initial stage now the regulation at this stage is carried out by histone modifications and methylation of dna histone modifications and their role in transcriptional activation has been dealt with in detail in another video presentation of mine which is already which has been already uploaded into youtube now i'll be discussing about other factors like methylation of dna now what is methylation of dna to explain it better let me just draw a diagram of dna this is a double helical model of dna and we know that the uh, nitrogenous bases uh, which are present over here are adenine guanine cy uh, cytidine and uh, uh, thymine so uh, this uh, cytidine uh, nitro base pairs with guanine and that is why it exists as a it is represented as a represented as a dinucleotide that is cpg so these two are linked with the help of a hydrogen bonds and uh, 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 this cytidine residue uh, serves as, uh, as a site for methylation that is addition of methyl group so the methyl group gets gets added to the cytidine residue and then what is uh, um, what happens when the cytidine residue within the dna gets methylated there are certain transcription factors which bind to this gc region and in order to bind they require a free cytidine molecule for their recognition so when the the cytidine residue is uh, methylated it, and the transcription factors fail to recognize it as a result of which they do not bind to the dna and as a result of which the transcription is lowered so in return what happens is when there is an increased methylation there is a decreased transcription so there is an inverse ratio between these two so the target sites of methylation are the cytidine residues which exist as dinucleotides that is cg or written as cpg and when there is an increased methylate uh, increased methylation of the cytidine residues the transcriptional activity is reduced now moving to the next checkpoint of uh, next checkpoint of the uh, gene uh, regulation of next checkpoint where the gene expression is controlled and this is uh transcription so there are many factors which play an important role and regulate the proper transcription now how does this happen say so suppose this is a gene which has to get transcribed so here we have say a gene and uh, the transcription of this gene is under the control of various kinds of promoters and uh, the under various kinds of promoters we have certain basal promoters basal promoters which lie 40 base pairs upstream of the gene which has to be transcribed and we have certain upstream promoters upstream promoters apart from them we have uh, another component which are known as enhancers now enhancers can lie either upstream or downstream that is down the gene 
that is somewhere here or even they can lie within the gene they can also lie within the gene and these enhancers control the transcription activity transcription activity to a very large extent that is promoters are responsible for the uh, low uh, small amount of activation whereas enhancers can activate to a very large extent now how do these enhancers activate say suppose the enhancer is placed in this particular fragment now uh, this this will loop like this this enhancer will then bind to the say suppose this is a promoter region say suppose this is a promoter region for the gene and the gene is lying adjacent over here then the enhancer has two binding regions that is one which binds with the dna and another one which binds with the transcriptional factors so with the help of the transcriptional factors the enhancer binds to the promoter region and increases the transcription of the gene so this uh, enhancer activates the transcription to a larger extent so as i discussed the basal promoters are the core promoters these promoters reside 40 base pairs upstream of the start site and these promoters are seen in all protein coding genes examples are uh, cat box and tata boxes and upstream promoters these promoters may lie up to 200 base pairs upstream of the transcriptional initiation site and the structure of these promoters are uh, structure of this promoter and the associated binding factors keep varying from gene to gene so in turn an entire combination of the promoter uh, enhancer and the transcription factors in total controls which gene gets transcribed and which gene gets suppressed so it depends up, uh, it's a uh, we can say it's a probability or a combination permutation and com a combination wherein um, a particular promoter is selected particular transcription factor is selected and a particular enhancer is selected in order to activate the transcription of one particular gene now moving to another slide regulation of rna processing now once rna has got synthesized it undergoes processing and uh, various steps involved in the processing are addition of a 5 dash cap say suppose this is the say suppose this is an rna now this is a 5 dash 5 prime terminal and this is a 3 prime terminal now it involves the addition of a cap at the 5 prime terminal and addition of a poly a tail at the 3 prime terminal and apart from that uh, when rna is um, uh, synthesized it contains certain exons and introns exons are uh, ultimately get joined together to form the desired proteins so th there may be many number of uh, exons and say suppose this is a first exon this is a second exon and this is a third exon during the exon shuffling uh, particular exons combine together or join together that is i suppose 1 and 3 are joined together then it will produce one kind of protein whereas if 2 and 3 are joined together it will produce another kind of protein this is known as exon shuffling so depending upon that we get different kinds of proteins so depending on the final combination of exons after splicing different kinds of proteins are obtained which can perform different functions in the cell so depending upon the need different uh, different kinds of um, exons get joined and different kinds of proteins are produced so suppose uh, these are the uh, four different exons and we can see the different combinations in two different cells that is in the cell 1 and cell 2 and these two proteins which uh, ultimate uh, these two exon combinations lead to the production of two different proteins which are specific for these cells that is cell 1 and cell 2 now moving to the next slide so this is another uh, so uh, here to say that uh, at the stage of transcription it is controlled by various promoters enhancers uh, transcriptional factors and uh, because of the rna processing steps
now coming to the next stage that is regulation of rna transport another factor over here to be considered is that uh, only those rnas which ultimately lead to the production of proteins are transmitted out through the nuclear pores into the cytoplasm and when they enter into the cytoplasm they meet the ribosomes and ultimately the protein synthesis starts so those rnas which do not lead the uh, protein synthesis are stopped within the nucleus so this is uh, this is another step where the protein uh, uh, expression of gene is controlled that is regulation of rna transport now moving to the next slide this uh, this uh, regulation of rna longevity this is another stage that is mrnas from different genes have different life spans the information of life span of mrna is found in the 3 prime untranslated region so within the uh, gene uh, at this 3 prime end the utr 3 prime untranslated utr contains a particular sequence which is responsible for the life of life of the rna it decides the lifespan of the rna uh, this particular sequence is a uua uh, within the 3 prime utr the more the number of uh, times the sequence is present the earlier will be the degradation of mrna that is uh, when the mrna degrades faster the lesser will be the protein synthesized from that particular mrna so in turn it ultimately uh, uh, ultimately limits the protein synthesis so the sequence a u a within the a triple u a within the three prime utr acts as a signal for early degradation and more the number of times the sequence is repeated shorter is the lifespan of mrna so this is another control point and uh, regulation of translation during the translation also it is controlled uh, and uh, how is this control it is with the help of the initiation codon that is aug codon we all know that uh, for a uh, mrna to get translated it has to be uh, the ribosome has to recognize the correct initiation cord uh, initiation codon otherwise the correct protein will not be produ produced so at this step also it is regulated the expression of gene product also depends upon the ability of the ribosome to recognize the correct AUG codon or the initiation codon out of the multiple methionine codons present in the mRNA. So this also determines the kind of the protein being synthesized. Now coming to the next stage that is the post translation control points. This is almost the final stage of regulation and under the uh, post translation control we have post translational modification. So the proteins come as a single chain uh, and uh, this this is the primary structure but to attain the functional uh, capacity uh, they undergo various modifications like glycosylation acetylation fatty acylation disulfide bond formations etc so these also control the uh, gene expression and apart from that uh, tr protein transport that is transportation to the site of action is also another important point which regulates the gene expression and ultimately uh, the uh, final point over here is the protein stability so the lifespan of the protein depends upon specific amino acid sequences present in them so they also decide how long the protein is going to stay in the cell and how long it will be active and uh, um, actively performing the various functions so these are the various steps which are involved in control of expression of genes within eukaryotes now the, the uh, so to just summarize the entire thing um, uh, the gene regulation is a bit complicated in case of eukaryotes uh, whereas in prokaryotes it is simple and there are various checkpoints and the checkpoint uh, uh, the regulation starts right from the chromatin stage and followed by control at transcription and translation finally after translation and protein synthesis uh, they it undergoes certain post translational modifications which also control the gene expression thank you for your patient hearing